Salmon Matters, How a Fish Feeds a Forest, by Lisa Connors, illustrated by Betty Gatewood. Beautiful art. Fish live in water and trees live in soil on land. Trees get their energy to grow from the sun but also from nutrients such as nitrogen. These nutrients come from dead plants and animals that lived in the forest. When they died, decomposers broke down their bodies and returned these nutrients to the soil. <clears throat> we could say that forest animals and plants feed the trees. Scientists have learned that in the Pacific Northwest, Salmon feed the trees. How can a fish feed a forest? Let's start with a look at their life cycle. Each year in late fall, coho salmon migrate from the Pacific Ocean to the river where they were born years ago. Females find a gravel bed called a red and build their nests with small pebbles. Males fertilize the eggs. This is called spawning. The adult fish guard their eggs for about 12 days, then <clears throat> the adults die. Their lives are over, but the salmon life cycle continues. In early winter, tiny baby salmon called alvin hatch. For many weeks, they hide in the gravel for safety, getting nourishment from the yolk sac of their eggs. Once the egg yolk sac is used up, the young salmon must find their own food. They explore the creek searching for insect larvae. In this stage of their life, they are also called fry. The fry stay in the creek eating and growing for about a year. The following spring, they have an instinctual urge to migrate to the ocean. Their bodies change as they go, allowing them to live in salt water once they reach the sea. Now the salmon are called smolts. Someday they'll return home to spawn and to feed the forest. In the ocean, coho eat zooplankton, crustaceans such as shrimp and krill, mollusks, squid, and small fish. Adult salmon live and feed in the ocean for about 18 months. Then instinct calls again. It's time to go home. Just like their parents, they'll struggle on a dramatic migration of up to 900 miles and more than 6,000 feet of elevation. They'll swim against the current, encounter obstacles, and fend off exhaustion and predators. It's an amazing feat. Just like their parents, they'll find a mate, lay and protect their eggs, and then die. But that's not all. Many animals come to the stream when salmon spawn. Bald eagles, otters, wolves, martens, ravens, gulls, and crows all eat salmon. These animals get energy from the salmon to grow and complete their life cycles. Bears especially have been waiting for this day. They've been eating mostly insects and fruits since they emerged from hibernation. Now their favorite food has arrived, but that's not all. When grizzly and black bears feed, they often carry fish up to 150 meters into the forest to eat alone. If there are a lot of fish spawning, bears only eat the eggs and brain, the parts with the most fat. Bears need to gain weight before hibernation. They leave the rest of the fish and return to the stream for more. The fish bodies are not wasted. Crows and ravens will eat from the bear's leftovers. Forest decomposers also use the dead fish. Flies lay eggs in the decaying salmon. In just a few days, a dead salmon will be full of wriggling maggots. The fly larvae crawl into the ground for the winter. They pupate and emerge the following spring in time to feed warblers and flycatchers that just migrated from the south. 
other decomposers continue to break down salmon bodies, soon their nutrients such as nitrogen are available in the soil for the plants to use. This nitrogen is a kind that comes from the ocean. The salmon brought it back in their bodies. The salmon helped feed the forest. But that's still not all. Someday, when the trees fall, they will decay and their nitrogen will enter the stream and be used by tiny plants and stream insects. And guess what? Those plants and insects are what salmon fry eat. The salmon not only continue their own life cycles, they are tied to the life cycles of bears, birds, wolves, trees, and small plants and insects that live in the streams. Salmon can feed us too, if we make sure they have the habitat to do so. Want to know more? This story is about coho salmon. There are other species of salmon. Each species is a little different in their life cycle. For example, how long they stay in the fry or smolt stage. However, they all migrate to the sea and eventually return home to the streams of their birth. Scientists often measure nitrogen in habitats. The more common form of nitrogen found in terrestrial and freshwater habitats is called N14. But scientists discovered a different form of nitrogen called N15 in trees in the Pacific Northwest. That's where we live, everybody. N15 comes from the plants and animals in the ocean. The salmon get this nitrogen from the food they eat while living in the ocean. Salmon do not eat once they begin their spawning run. This means the nitrogen that their bodies give back to the land when they die all came from the ocean. Scientists realized how salmon were connected to the growth and life cycles of trees when they were measuring nitrogen in the trees near salmon streams. This discovery led to the understanding of how important bears are in spreading the nitrogen farther inland from the shoreline, making it available for trees to use. In areas where humans have chased out bears, the forests are less healthy. And here's just a lot of our terms that you all should be learning. So I'll cover these in another short reading. And you may have noticed there were some pages that didn't have any drawings. And so I wonder what you would draw for other decomposers continuing to break down salmon bodies. Like what would you draw for that? Or here, thinking about want to know more. Thinking about like the nitrogen in the trees and the way that salmon and what they eat in the ocean and trees are connected. What would you draw for that? How the trees, salmon, and the ocean are connected. Think about all that. Salmon matters.